Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here. Welcome back to another video for Elden Ring. And in this one, I want to showcase my Blood Loss build. The build that I've been using for, let's be honest, most of the game. But of course, as of the most recent patch, patch 1.03, there of course have been some additions. So for those of you guys that maybe are picking up these sort of uh, Dex Arcane weapons, maybe looking to sort of dip into blood because it is so incredibly potent and just really fun then maybe this can give you some inspiration. So if you guys do enjoy this, a like would be super appreciated. Comment down below. Let me know how you guys are setting up your builds. Obviously, there will be some differences. This is not by any means the perfect build, but it works nicely for me. I've been able to get through the game, and I've been able to make light work of most things that come my way, unless, of course, they happen to be immune to bleed. So this has been fun. Of course, first things first, in our primary weapon slot, we have Rivers of Blood because this is now fixed. It is a fantastic weapon. Loving this one, of course, the unique skill Corpse Pilot makes for light work against a lot of enemies. It racks up blood loss build up incredibly quickly. This one is currently sitting at plus six. So, of course, it has 69 blood loss build up. Nice. Of course, it will go up a little bit later. I do need to upgrade this one. But either way, it is still hitting incredibly nicely. For those of you guys that want to see where my stats are currently sitting at, I'm currently sitting at level 140, and of course this is my dex and arcane distribution. Some of these are boosted, of course, because of my talisman, but this is basically my current setup. Of course, in addition to Rivers of Blood, I have the Nagakiba, which I have then imbued with the Seppuku Ash of War, because of course this in and of itself is a very nice katana. It is incredibly long. This is basically Sephiroth's blade. When you pick this one up, it's just like, oh my goodness, this thing is huge. If you guys have got Eleonora's Pole Blade, you will of course have obtained this on the journey. If you guys haven't, then I'll link that video in the description box down below. You can follow that video and you'll get this along the way. Of course, this one has pretty nice deck scaling. I'm making it a Blood Nagakiba because we've of course applied Seppuku. We then of course have 101 Blood loss build up so this one is very very nice now of course the handy thing about having seppuku with this one means that if in certain situations i want to basically increase that blood loss build up i can then apply it to one weapon and i can then still dual wield rivers of blood and this that of course therefore still gives me access to the power stance and i can then still press left trigger to bring out the rivers of blood corpse piler if I want to do some meaty damage. However, if I do want to go regular twin blade seppuku, double seppuku, basically applying that to both blades and then just wrecking shop, we of course have the upgraded Uchi Katana, which is a fantastic weapon. Of course, if you start as a samurai, you will have this. If you haven't, you can of course get one in the game. I will again link the video down below showing you where you can grab that one. Basically, in the previous blood video we did, I've shown you locations for most of the stuff that I will be using. This one, of course, has 102 blood loss buildup, currently sitting at C deck scaling. And again, this is very nice. Now, there are plenty of other blood options. I have also got the God Peeler, which is fantastic, but I just really like katanas. I love the way they behave, I love their attack animations. It's just my kind of weapon. So, I've been having a lot of fun with this setup. Now, of course, on top of that, for the armor pieces, we have the white mask. This is a must. This, of course, has the added bonus that it slightly raises your attack power when there is blood loss nearby. And of course, there's going to be a lot of blood loss when you're running this build. It is a little bit finicky to get. Again, the details on obtaining this are in the video. I will link in the description box down below. If you have defeated Mogwin already, you are going to be blocked from getting this one. So if you don't have it, then, you know, you can go without. But if you can get it, that does stack nicely with the talisman I'll go through in a moment. As for the rest of the armor pieces, this is purely just from a style point of view. I just really like the black knife armor. I love that sort of translucent cape. Unfortunately, when you wear this helmet, it doesn't still put the hood up, so you do lose that look, but this kind of fits nicely together. As for the talisman, I have Radagon Scar Seal. Of course, I'm sure a lot of you guys are basically running with this. Yes, you do get an increase to damage taken, but you do also get the added bonus that it boosts a lot of your stats, so you get that nice plus three across things like Vigor, Endurance, Strength, and Dex. In addition to that, you have the Winged Sword Insignia. This is a talisman a lot of you guys would have got early on in the game. Of course, this raises your attack power with successive attacks. Now, it is worth noting, there is an upgraded version of this, which is called the Rotten Winged Sword Insignia. If you complete Millicent's questline, which of course I am close to finishing, so I will have that one soon. Probably should have done it before this video, but either way, if you get that one, it is the same behavior, but it just greatly increases your attack power. So it is the natural progress and natural upgrade to this one. So if you do want to get the better version of this, simply do Millicent's questline. But otherwise, if you have this, this is still a nice damage boost because of course Katana's attack quickly. If you're power stancing, you get those successive attacks, so you can benefit from this. In addition to that, the Lord of Blood's Exaltation. This is a fantastic talisman, and this stacks with the White Mask. So, of course, those two make for a very potent combo. This one also raises attack power when blood loss occurs in the vicinity. So, basically, with both these on together, you are maximizing your damage with blood loss. 
And then finally for the last one, this is kind of like a customizable slot to be honest. Sometimes I throw in stuff for more health, more stamina. Currently I of course also have Marika's Scar Seal, mainly because I needed a little bit of boost to some of my other stats so that I could of course use some other items. So I'm using this at the moment, but you can swap this out depending on what you feel like. And that my friends is pretty much it. It's pretty simple, it's not like a super in-depth build because it is basically as simple as that. If you're running with dual katanas, whether that be double Uchigatana or double Nagakiba, either way, if you have double Seppuku, then don't forget that if you want to apply it to both blades, you do need to two-hand your left weapon first, apply Seppuku, then switch back to twin hand mode, apply it again, and you then have it on both of your blades. You can then, of course, do that, run up, and basically just use your power stance combo to wreck shop. Alternatively, if you want to run Rivers of Blood, then I have that again in my right hand so that that way I can still apply Seppuku to my left hand weapon so I get a little bit more of that blood loss build up whilst I'm doing the power stance combo and I then still have quick access to Corpse Piler anytime I need to do even more damage. So there you have it, quick little rundown on what I have personally been running. Again, I know there are plenty of different permutations. I'm sure a lot of you guys out there in the comments will be like, don't forget to use God Peeler. Yeah, I know that weapon is amazing. I've got it, I like it, but I do love my katana. So if you guys want to run around, like a bloody samurai, then maybe give this one a spin. If you guys have missed our recent videos, be sure to check out this one. And again, don't forget to keep it locked on the channel for plenty more Elden Ring.